All right, let's see your parallel parking skills. Pretty good. Yo, honestly killed it. It's Friday morning. It was a beautiful day. Me and Carly decided to go downtown. Our favorite area. What's our favorite area? I honestly don't know what it's called. Say Obento? Uh, yeah. You guys said you want to see more day-to-day -day stuff exploring the city, so here we are getting our morning coffee. You got it from a place called El Ella. This is probably maybe the best coffee, top three coffee I've had in Lisbon. The game is on Sunday, so we have practice later in the day today. We're like really preparing for deliverance now. We travel tomorrow, it should be fun. Catch up with you guys probably at practice or something. You see the MQ already? Yeah, it's, it's cranked mine. All right, first up, yeah, I think downtown Lisbon's absolutely beautiful with all the historical buildings and it's just like an old city. I, it's really nice. But I have one question. How come there are so many abandoned buildings? I need somebody from Lisbon or Portugal to let me know because it seems like it just doesn't fit in. It'll be like a nice area and then just an abandoned building. So I need someone to let me know in the comments. I'm gonna get to practice and I'll catch y'all later. It's a mess in here. Boys are gonna start picking up after themselves. Look at my locker, clean. No, I'm just playing. There's a little baby waiting for me. Just annoy me all day today. Practice finished. We got one more practice until we travel for the game. And I'm back where I'm normally at, waiting for my wife to pick me up. She's not late this time. I didn't give her much heads up to come pick me up, so that's my bad. Today was interesting. First time getting up and down. Felt pretty good. Feel a little out of shape. That takes some time, but I've talked with coach. It's gonna be a game time decision, so we will see. Guys, I gotta stick around and see about playing this game. If, I, if it's my first game back, I'm really hoping I'm gonna play, but either way, we'll do a game breakdown and we'll get better. So I'm gonna go home, make some dinner with my wife and probably call it a day. Ah, oh, I did so much work for this dinner. So what do we got? We got the taco meat. I need you to put some work in. I've been working. I got the lettuce. Yeah, you gotta cut the lettuce and clean oh, the lettuce. Oops, sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, so what are we making, babe? Crunchy wrap supremes. Crunchy wrap supremes. Homemade Taco Bell, what you know? Wait, Wait you didn't put the little other thing on it. What other thing? Just put the little tortilla chips. I'm actually right on this one, huh? I'm not even done yet. Chef it up, chef it up. Oh, we're back. Cheers, thank you for dinner. Love you. Love you. Hey man, stop begging. Not you too. You little rat. You do look cute though. Look how cute you are. Big news, my dad came through and sent one of my old masks. I already ripped it open, but I'll unbox it for you and show you this. So my dad expedited my old mask from Poland. Gives me another option. This is like 3D printed also to my face. So this was to protect me when I had a broken nose my third year. I'm not sure if it's gonna have the same effect for my cheekbone. You see how this isn't as big. So we're gonna try it out today at practice to see if it still protects. Ask the doctor, the physio. Might have to get on my LeBron Batman mask game. But it's just nice to have another option because I don't know, especially in the heat of a game, maybe I get sick of one and I wanna try another. The trip to Deliverance, it's like only three and a half hours. It's basically a day trip. So packing super light today. Got my travel gear, socks, underwear, tights. <laughs> Baby, get out of there. Toiletries, pillow for the bus, books for the bus, electronics. Got a couple Netflix shows downloaded, charger. Stuff like jerseys, shoes and stuff. They're all at the facility, so I'll pick those up. More or less, that's why we pack so light. So yeah, now I'm gonna head to practice. And then after that, we hop on the bus straight to the road trip. Let me put you guys on with this power coffee. So it's about one long shot of espresso, five grams of creatine, creatine monohydrate. You should, uh, you should be feeling sharper with that. Breakfast time for Ben. I love you. No, I love you. I don't like it. All right, I don't know if you guys can tell, probably can't because I keep talking about it. The whole mask situation stresses me out a little bit. I still gotta be able to produce and play at a high level. So I need to be comfortable in what I'm wearing. All right, so let me walk you through what I'm thinking. 
This one club gave me, prescribed by the doctor. Apparently it's better for protection on the cheek. But on this one, I can see the mask in my peripheral. Don't love it. This one, 3D printed three years ago for a broken nose, so a different injury. I feel like similar protection. The question is, is this gonna be low enough protecting this cheekbone? This is kind of the debate, the thing I have to settle. This one I can see a lot clearer because it's so tight on my face. So I think I should be able to play better in this one, but it's like, I'm not gonna play much worse in this one. I, I may play the same in both. It's just a lot to kind of navigate right now, stressing me out a little bit. I mean, I'm gonna choose to wear one of them so you'll see how I do. But for you guys, which one would you wear based on looks and based on performance and based on protection? A lot that goes into this decision. We're gonna try this one out today, see if I like it better. I haven't played in it in two years. We're gonna shoot, see if it's easier to shoot in. We'll see, I don't know, a lot going through my mind right now. It's kind of some of the decisions you gotta make as a pro. Let's get to practice. All right, this is really just to get a feel for how it, how this mask is different from the other one. This one for sure makes me more confident though. It makes me feel like LeBron in, when did he wear this? 2013, he had the Batman mask. But this one feels tighter, so I don't feel as stressed like lifting the ball close to my face. I think I'm gonna shoot some pull-ups, get my pull-up going and see how it feels. I'm just gonna say right now, this one's for sure gonna win in terms of feel and comfort. The only thing that's gonna change this decision from not wearing this black one is if, like the physio or the doctor says, it doesn't provide enough comfort, or not comfort, enough protection. But, feels good. I feel like shooting is so much mindset that half the battle is just gonna be picking the mask. It's gonna let me be the most confident that I'm gonna be the most confident and comfortable in. And I think that will actually lessen my risk of injury because I'll play less hesitant because the more hesitant you are and the more you're trying not to get injured, I feel like the more you get injured. I don't know what the science is behind that, but I swear every time I was half and half on how I felt, normally times I got injured. So I think the key is to just be as confident as I can. Everybody's always like, confidence is key, confidence is key. But I mean, with shooting, that's like 90% of the battle. Yeah, you gotta have a good shot. But you gotta believe that thing's going in. As long as I can have a mask that allows me to be confident while I'm shooting, then I win the battle. A little touch work, then I gotta get to the weight room. I still don't really have a floater, but how far my floaters come in the last five years. But my floater used to be so ugly. Because I'd never have to shoot him because I could just shoot mid-range. But now, sometimes I, I need it. All right, let's get to the weight room. Today's work, day before game. Magnificent. Take three. No, go. take one, take one. <laughs> Take four, <laughs> one, <laughs> one shot, everybody knows the rules. <laughs> oh, AB. AB ruining all the shots, man. Here's the room. One bed for me and the birthday boy. Classic overseas basketball road trips. Got to separate the, the twin beds. This is downtown Deliverance, I guess. 
All right, you know what time it is? It is game day. The whole week leads up to this moment. We play Deliverance today at five. Five o'clock is a very weird game time because it's like not enough to take a pregame nap. It's kind of a funky time. All that being said, it's gonna be an absolute dog fight tonight. I don't know if there's history between Deliverance and Benfica, but this year, we like hate each other. I think to most people's surprise, they beat us twice in a row at the start of the season. And they were pretty emotional wins too. They hit a buzzer beater. First game we played them like two days later and we just like laid an egg and they beat us again. In Portugal too, when we lose, Porto loses, Sporting loses to a team that's not those three, it's kind of like a big deal. And they beat us twice in a row. So that being said, more backstory is our coach and some of our players won two championships here in 2018 and 2019. The scattering report on them is they are really, really physical. They have a really solid point guard, Wes Washboon, lefty driver, and can honestly shoot well to probably the best point guard in the league at this moment. One of the best, one of the top three, I would say. So we got to make sure to neutralize him. They got a really good home court advantage too. Their fans are solid. Deliverance is a small city, like 10,000, but I've heard it's a basketball city. So they're going to be loud and emotional. They have three solid big men. So they're able to really play good screen defense. They hedge hard, very physical. So that's something we got to deal with. Get off the ball quick, make quick decisions, confident decisions. We're honestly, I'd say similar style. They're probably a little bit more disciplined, but they want to get up and run. We want to get up and run. I think what wins tonight is maturity and who's going to set the tone physically because both times the more physical team won. I'll probably get in this pregame routine after this and then we'll call it good. Hometown hero. Lunch? What do you think? Final decision, I'm going with the black. Game time. Look at the boys. Big, big game for us. Me and the coaching staff agreed that I'm gonna play tonight even with only three live practices under my belt since the injury. This will be a little different rotation than normal because I'm coming back so suddenly. But, but anyways, let's get into this game breakdown and see what we did good and what we did bad. I don't get into the game until the start of the second quarter, which is way different than my normal rhythm. I hear a lot of young and immature hoopers complaining about not getting enough playing time. My opinion is any playing time is enough playing time to make an impact. And usually if you make an impact, the coach has to play you. And that's exactly what I do off this nice extra pass for my four-man lift fake one dribble cash. Smooth, confident, and ready to play. The other team does a good job pushing the tempo even on a made basket. But here, notice how disciplined our help side defense is. Everybody is in the correct position and all working as a unit. This attention to detail allowed us to take all the ball handlers passing options away, leading to a steal. Now here's a good example of what indecision looks like. I'm hesitant and I need to just shoot the ball. Listen, I'm going to use my no practice excuse this one time, but don't let me do it again. On this defensive possession, I want you to pay attention to my positioning. I'm high in the gap to discourage the drive, and I react away to my man. Here it made the point guard less inclined to turn the corner. Here I get a nice deflection fighting against a mismatch in the post, and then proceed to get absolutely sniped. Let's rewind this so you can laugh with me one more time, though. He needs some milk! Now here later in the second quarter, my point guard does a great job of seeing the opportunity for a triple switch. I don't see it quick enough. Just poor defensive awareness. I had a chance to make a play here. Again, with this being my first game back, it's going to be a bit of a weird rotation. I don't check back in until five minutes to go in the third. Check out the mask. I think it looks good. Let me know what y'all think. Now here's a good example of embodying the phrase, every possession matters. If the ball's on the floor, most of the time, the guy to the floor is going to get it. I do that here, get us a possession. The other guy doesn't. We come up with the ball and get into our secondary fast break. Watch as our point guard, Tony Douglas, does a great job reading the bottom help side defender on this pick and roll. He has to pull all the way underneath the rim, creating an advantage for either me or AB with a long closeout. I attack with a one dribble move, get into my floater, got fouled. Being super nitpicky, I maybe could have chose a better option to evade the help side defender. Instead of choosing to go over, I could have done an inside Euro step, but I still got fouled and I can't complain. Got a little bit later here in the third. Watch the reads I make on this play. First, I get a down screen. 
my man goes through, so I do a slight fade back straight into a ball screen. I do a hang dribble to read if the pocket pass is there. It's not. I, I then pass, expecting the boomerang so we can get into another pick and roll. The big is kind of late, so they have to switch. I attack and hit this awkward slow step bank shot. I think I made this shot tougher than it needed to be. I could have went to a one-two stride stop finish, but still, a bucket's a bucket. Now this next play is a great example of basketball poetry. In this possession, my job is to be the advantage creator. I need to read this pick and roll coverage and get my teammates in a position to attack a scrambling defense. My only critique is if Ivan stays in the corner, he has a wide open three. But either way, watch how this possession unfolds. Now here, a similar handoff action, but I'm reading two things. My defender and the help side defender. They're both out of position, and my big man makes a great backdoor pass. Bucket. Now here into the fourth quarter, I have to match up with their point guard. Here's a defensive masterclass on how to use your length to defend smaller, quicker defenders. I'm giving just enough space that I can contest the three, but not enough to where he can drive by me. Great defense, great stop. Here we have another handoff action into a pick and roll. We don't really get much, so we want a second ball screen. Watch how they defend this. They're already jumping into a hard hedge, essentially making this a double team. I know two guys are on me, so someone has to be open. I make the skip pass, open three, good basketball. Five minutes to go in the game, up 20, I get a defensive rebound and push the fast break. We have numbers because the guy fell down, so I'm able to be patient. I make a nice move on their big man. And now anybody watching who's not familiar with European basketball, this is what's called an unsportsmanlike foul. On defense, when you foul, you have to be going for the ball. See how he kind of just grabs my waist? There's not a clear play on the ball, then it's an unsportsmanlike foul. Unsportsmanlike fouls are probably the worst play you can make because the other team gets two free throws and the ball. I wanted the and one, but I'll take the two free throws and you know I gotta knock them down. Overall in this game, I think we played solid, not incredible, but we did a great job sharing the ball and playing team defense. Personally, I'm just grateful to be back on the court again. I ended this game with, I think, 12 points, two assists, two rebounds, something like that. In the end, another win for the good guys. I like how we're progressing, a huge step in the right direction, and I think it's just going to be a fun, fun last six months of the season. Long way to go, but we're making progress, and I'm proud of these guys. She said, yeah, I know. Wish I could make it easier. I can't, I just know right and wrong.